Roaring Twenties was an industrial age full of promiscuous parties and an increase in high fashion and women's rights. It is said to be a time full of sex, jazz, and dance. In the 1920s, a new genre of music, jazz, was becoming increasingly popular and changing the way Americans viewed dance and parties. The Cotton Club and the Save Boy Ballroom in Harlem are credited for lighting the spark of jazz in America. Fashion in the 1920s had changed drastically since the turn of the century. Women now sported risque sequin dresses with low necklines, fishnets, heels, and short bob haircuts. Men were now seen in expensive suits and slicked back hair. Music was incredibly influential to culture in the 1920s. It set the stage for the rise of many musical legends. One jazz artist was Louis Armstrong. Armstrong's rise to fame began in the early 1920s, and he became increasingly popular for years after that. Other popular jazz artists included Joe King Oliver, Edward Ory, Jelly Roll Morton, and Paul Whiteman. Dances were very upbeat and synchronized at that time. Some significant dances were the Charleston and the Black Bottom. They both included a lot of stamping and swaying. People would dance in large groups at parties or clubs. The introduction of electricity and lighting made dancing late into the night more comfortable. People were constantly staying out until the break of dawn. The 1920s was the dawn of the new age for women. Before the 1920s, women were seen as just housewives. They began to reach for change during World War I. While their husbands were at war, the women took jobs and gained dominance in the family. They got the right to vote in national elections. They also became more accepted in career fields previously opened only to men. When the soldiers returned from the war, they were looking for a good time, not the old structure of society. Women responded by acting out, wearing shorter skirts, drinking, smoking in public, and having sex. The behavior and attitudes of these women largely contributed to the Roaring Twenties. Prohibition of the 1920s was a period in U.S. history in which the manufacture, sale, and transportation of liquor was made illegal. It is described as a time of glamour, gangsters, and rebellion, where even the average citizen broke the law. The Volstead Act, passed on October 28, 1919, clarified that beer, wine, and other intoxicating liquors were unlawful. However, society looked toward gangsters and speakeasies to rebel against this law. The most famous of these was Al Capone from Chicago. The stock market crashed in 1929, and the beginning of the Great Depression started changing people's minds. The government needed money, and making alcohol legal again would open up many new jobs for citizens and additional sales tax for the government. On December 5, 1933, the 21st Amendment was ratified, which made alcohol legal once again. The 1920s was a time of great advancement. New means of transportation were created on land, water, and in the sky. New medicines were made that would change the way the world lives. The Great Depression was upon this country, but we continued to advance. Some technological advances of the 1920s was the Band-Aid by Earl Dickinson, insulin by Sir Frederick Grand Banting, penicillin by Alexander Fleming, the traffic signal by Garrett A. Morgan, and the aerosol can by Eric Rothian. These inventions, and many more, contributed to the development in the 1920s. The expansion of government activities during World War I was reversed during the 1920s. Government efforts to break up trusts and regulate business practices gave way to a new emphasis on partnerships between government and business. By the end of the war, the American people supported neither Wilson's international commitments 
nor his domestic interventions into the economy and society. In 1920, Republican Senator Warren G. Harding of Ohio was elected president. Under the Harding administration, the government was pro-business, anti-tax, and anti-regulation. Due to economic corruption such as the Teapot Dome, historians today consider Harding to be the worst president ever. Harding's successor, Calvin Coolidge, put America into a half decade of great economic growth and widespread influence. Coolidge's successor in 1928, Herbert Hoover, was a Republican and a self-made millionaire. In October 1929, just months after Hoover assumed office, the stock market collapsed and the Great Depression began, which is the worst economic crisis in American history. The Great Depression lasted from 1929 to 1945. Over 13 million Americans lost their job and many more were left homeless.